Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Know How is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Want desktop performance in a portable package? Well, forget it. Today, you'll know how to build a portable, rugged PC. Welcome to Know How. This is Twit's How To Show. I'm Aya Zaktar. And you might be wondering, hey, that's not Leo Laporte. Where's Leo Laporte? Well, he's somewhere in SoCal. If you're a path friend of him, you could probably find him. I have no idea where he is because, you know, we don't talk that much. But anyway, we got Ryan Marsh here to show us something pretty intriguing. Now, how do we know Ryan? He just, he's just standing, I'm just sitting around my desk and it seems to be this fellow walking around every now and then. And it's this guy, Ryan Staring Marsh. At lights. All right, so, so what exactly do, do you do here at Twit every now and then? I'm Twit Scaffer. I uh, set up all the lighting so everybody here looks pretty and the backgrounds look interesting and all that stuff. It's, uh, it's pretty exciting. So if, if anybody has lighting issues, they should complain to you directly? Absolutely. Feel free. That's I actually great. have no Twitter, uh, never check my Facebook, and no G+, so uh, I won't be able to hear you, but, you know. That is brilliant. I like this idea. Do work that people see and they can't complain. <laughs> exactly. Very interesting idea. <laughs> Send all hate mail to ayas at twit.tv. <laughs> Now, <laughs> one day, Ryan was walking around. He's, he goes, hey, I got this PC in a Pelican case. Do you want to see it? I'm like, oh, great. A guy takes his PC and it puts it in a Pelican case. Well, that's what you do with these cases anyway, right? He's like, no, 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 you got to see this. And so th he brings in this monstrously large case. And it's not, it's not a PC in the case. This case is the PC. All right, so, so what am I looking at here? All right, so... Um I basically took a power piece, a uh, big desktop that I designed for gaming and uh, CAD work. Um, I built it right into the belly of the Pelican case, removed all the foam, everything, and I screwed and drilled holes directly into the case. I know I destroyed the waterproofness. Um, as you can see here, there's the uh, open space in here where the, uh, the PC sits, and these are the parts out front. Um, and then I put a monitor in the lid, so I basically can grab it and um, take it on the road, anywhere, and it's a full power desktop. Takes me 30 seconds to go. Now, you, you could have a thin and light. In fact, this is your ultra book. Yes. Now, why on earth would you take a, a full-fledged PC and cram it into this case when you could just be using something like this? Power. It's just that simple. I, uh, I used to have a laptop, and uh, my laptop sucked. It, uh, it never really did any of its jobs well. It wasn't a good gaming machine. It was really expensive. It overheated. Um, you know, it was lots of problems. And one day I just got fed up with it. And I'm like, I want to actually bring my desktop with me. How do I do that? Now, what's, what's funny is that uh, this is an ultra portable PC here. And we have the graphics card that's going to go in that machine. This weighs more than the actual laptop. So you've got a ton of freaking power just in your graphics card. Now, OK, so we're looking at this this uh, PC here, you got a 22 inch display. Yeah. Right into here. And well, what kind of, I noticed in the back here, it's been cut out. What kind of skills should somebody have before they even attempt to try something like this? Well, um, I would suggest doing this in a machine shop. Um, first of all, if you have the control of making precise cuts, it's a lot easier. I actually did this with all handheld tools, so it's a little bit chewed up, not really pretty. Um, I used a Dremel, a power circle saw, a portable drill, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for power tools. Yeah, it looks like somebody gnawed this a little bit. It looks yeah. like you, you did do this by hand, and this is the original one you made for yourself, right? Yes. Okay, so we got, let's, let's open this up again. All right, so what we're actually gonna do is actually we're gonna put this back together because Ryan came in, this was all pre-built because you did this a while ago. Yeah. But there's a lot of steps when it comes to putting something like this together because this is a giant plastic case. Seems like a really bad idea to take a bunch of components that are, I don't know, uh, subject to static interference, take this case, put it in a car, rub it against the carpet. Sounds like a disaster waiting to happen. What did you do to protect this case uh, or protect the components from the case? So I had to make two very specific uh, modifications uh, when I was building the case. Um, first step was 
to actually paint the interior. This is made of a very rugged polypropylene, but as you said, it builds up a lot of static charge. So uh, when you spray paint, like an automotive plastic paint, something like that, coat the interior, it actually reduces that static buildup by a large percentage. The next step is to make sure that all of the metal components inside are grounded. So they're all actually daisy chained together, wired from one to the next to the shell of the power supply so that when there is static buildup, that power has somewhere to escape. So what, what other uh, consideration have to worry about? Now, I noticed you have the solid state drive there. That's because of all the bumps and, and because you're taking this on the road, right? Oh, yeah. So the solid state drive um, was a choice I made really early on because I know that they have no moving parts. And so it can be a rugged, rugged piece of equipment for this, this particular case. And, uh, you know, I mean, I, I pick it up, put it down, drop it, kick it. It gets a lot of abuse. Now, I'm, I'm noticing what looks to be some piece from that old tower or something. Where did you get all of these, uh, I guess, these brackets and braces? Because you're not just going to get this off the shelf. Where, where did these come from? I actually took an old tower that I had. It was an empty tower case, and I shredded it. I ripped it apart with a metal saw and a Dremel, and I used a sanding wheel to smooth out the edges, and I flattened a little couple parts out and planted it right in the base so that I could mount the motherboard and give that grounding property so there was no static underneath the motherboard. Yeah, because otherwise you'd have to come up with your own standoffs here. Th these are obviously built into the tower that you uh, took apart. Because when you're attaching that motherboard, you don't want to have to start mapping out exactly, okay, where are these supposed to be? Where are the screws supposed exactly. to go? Exactly, saves no, time. No need to reinvent the wheel right there. So you've got a bunch of components already in here. you got an optical drive. Why just stick with an optical drive? Well, I mean, it is a gaming rig, and I do use heavy-hitting software, so I want to be able to watch movies and throw in the random DVD or Blu-ray, and uh, so I made sure I had an optical drive available to me. And if that fails, it's not a critical component, so I wasn't worried. Okay, so we, we also have this lid, yeah. which I'm intrigued by, because while this case is open, it looks all nice and clean, but it easily allows you to look into the PC but what exactly is this little thing here? <laughs> so the lid actually slammed down on me a couple times after I built it, uh, when I would open it up. Yeah, so. It feels like a dangerous thing. I, I basically was resting against the monitor here on these hinges I put in, and uh, it would slam closed. I got really annoyed, so I went to the hardware store and basically got a cabinet hook. It's just for, you know, when you close a cabinet door and it sticks shut, that's what this thing is. So the lid works. Uh, Works pretty well now. It's the little things you learn when you're actually using this. From yes. day to day, you're like, I don't like getting my fingers smashed that often. Although I do notice you don't have something to keep this open. I assume people aren't trying to shove this closed when you're working No, on I it. normally put it up against a wall most of the time if I can't. It's somewhere where it's not really going to be shaking that much. So, so let's, let's try to put this thing back together, I think. So we've got here, we've got all kinds of ports. This obviously has allowed you to open it up. We've got our our old piece of, of uh, tower there, you're gonna put your motherboard back in because this, well, right now, we can't do anything with this. Right. Well, before I actually started and before I put it together, I had to take into consideration the fan ports because the, the ports and the airflow movement in a plastic case is critical. Plastic is going to retain heat. It's gonna be very insulating. And so you're more likely to overheat than you would in a metal case. Um, so I had to actually pay attention to airflow. So I was br basically used the power supply's exhaust fans to bring air out to the, to the right side of the case. This is a big exhaust fan in the back. Air inflows from the, this side, the left side of the case, and from this fan, which you see is built onto the lid, actually puts air right in front of the intake of the CPU. So that way I get good solid movement from top left to rear right. So you don't want to just cram a PC in here without thinking about airflow because, no. of course, it's going to be holding a ton of heat. And, if, you know, if you're going to do all the work to protect the components with grounding it, you don't want it overheating. No. All right, so we've got this guy. So this is yeah. your motherboard. How did you pick this motherboard out of all of them? Um, you know, it was one of the few that actually fit this processor. I chose the processor first and uh, picked a motherboard that actually was compatible with it. Um, it was also a good size. It wasn't too big. Uh, it was just the right size with enough, enough slots for just a, all I needed was a graphics card and a wireless card. And um, yeah, I mean, it worked. It was a good size for the case. Okay. Just fits. Now, some people are going to wonder why, hey, Ryan, why didn't you bother using like a mini ITX or something, a smaller motherboard? And then maybe you could have a smaller, well, giant PC. I mean, this is, this is a portable because PC. then you get a smaller CPU. And you have, I mean, if I'm going to do this, the whole point of it is to have power on the go. I mean, I might as well make it the most powerful 
PC I possibly can. Otherwise, I should be carrying around a laptop. So what kind of considerations did you have to do for cable management? Because I noticed you have things cable tied and you have things you know, just kind of attached to the side here. How do you make sure that uh, you're not, these cables aren't moving and causing issues? Well, I zip tied them together and like bundle all the, um, all of the power supply cables. So there, you can see here, this actual bundle here pulls out and it, it pretty much stays where it is because you don't want the cables flopping around when you're picking it up, throwing it in the car. They could bang against components, come loose. By adding a few zip ties, it really held them in place. All right, so let's, we're going to put this thing back together. Can we get, do you think we can get this to work by the end of the episode? I hope so. It's, it's a possibility, but uh, maybe not, because there's a ton of these tiny little power connections. If you can see that in the video, they're, they're just about the size of my fingertip. So this is going to take a bit of work to put it back together. We can harass Ryan with some light here. Yeah, like, that uh, That's good. somewhat so helpful. It's the, this is the power for the card section of the motherboard. And I have the, uh, I think I'm going to be able to just plug in the power switch. All right, so this looks like it's going to take a bit yeah, of work. It's going to be right. a bit of work. All right, so I'm noticing, though, you apparently like to have a beer when you're putting together your PCs. Well, this is a beer cozy. Yeah. Well, what, what is this doing that, in your PC? That was an afterthought. Uh, I wanted a wireless keyboard and mouse, and um, so here's, here's the mouse. And uh, basically, I wanted to be able to carry it in the case rather than carry it separately in a backpack. So I was looking at this case, and the keyboard actually fits nicely right across here in between the monitor and the, uh, and the, the hood. But a mouse is a little bit more of a ball-like object, so I threw a beer cozy in here so I could just stick it in there. That, <laughs> I would imagine you don't use that when you've, you're actually using the machine. You no, pop it out. And... No, that's just for sheerly carrying the, uh, the mouse around. Well, you could probably heat up things in there if you wanted to. You got all this heat coming off of here. You, you <laughs> it's true. You could have built like a little hot pocket station, right? I'm surprised. <laughs> a, little, a little toaster slot in the, uh, the yeah, front of the hood. Yeah, for pop tarts. Yeah, I, I, you know, I, there, there's places you can go with this, with all the uh, airflow you got here. Now, you've used some kind of, a, you got a Logitech RF keyboard here, so you didn't go with Bluetooth? No, I didn't. Um, I originally actually had a Bluetooth keyboard. Um, the models were all a bit too large. The RF keyboards were just small enough to be slim and fit in between these two so I could carry it inside the case because that was just at the time, a couple of years ago, they hadn't built small enough Bluetooth keyboards for my, my needs. Did you have any issues with wireless when it came to this device? Because this, this is a big machine. I don't know. I don't think plastic's going to cause that many issues, but would a standard, like just a regular Wi-Fi card in here be of use? But I think you've got monster antennas in here. Yeah, so I took a normal Wi-Fi card, this guy. Uh, I put it in, it had two teeny little antennas, and they were inside the case, and I got no reception. So I uh, then went and bought an aftermarket uh, large array of, you know, large antenna array, which had a long attachment cable. And then I actually took out the big metal br bracket that they normally sit in, and I uh, used cable holders to basically mount them, one horizontal here under the monitor, one vertical here, and I get great coverage now. It's out in the air, it picks up all the signals I need. You don't fly with this thing, do you? No. I would think this is a, a big no-no. Yeah, uh, no, there's, I would never check it, and it's too big to be carry on, so. All right, so while you're trying to put that together, I, I want to I talk about a limited edition t-shirt that is out right now. It's at teespring.com slash twit. Can we get this picture up? It's a fantastic shirt. Now, on the back of it is the twit logo. Now, if you're looking at the video right now and you're like, hey, it looks like it's broken up with some black in there, it's because the blue is actually every show that's on twit this year, including things like Know How. So it looks blue and you're like, hey, is that a clickable link? Can I go up and tap that and it's going to make a difference? Well, you can click it, but you'll be tapping somebody on the back because that's a t-shirt, okay? It doesn't exactly have an internet connection. It won't change colors of the link. It doesn't do that when you visited it. But you will have a very strange conversation with the person wearing it. But if you want to go get one of these yourself, it only costs $20. It's a limited edition shirt. There's only a couple of days left. What exactly how many days do we got left, Colin? 20-something days? Uh, You're blocking it with the, did we get everything? You can see. 15 days from the production alley. Thank you, guys. 15 days left on the, the limited edition shirt. Now, it only costs $20. You have your, op your option of either American Apparel or Through the Loom, 100% cotton. you got a lot of different options. Colin was going ahead. He's changing the sizes. If you're a big guy, a little guy, you can get a T-shirt. Again, though, this is a limited edition shirt with all the Twitch shows 
from this year. So if you forget what show showed up this year, like, I don't know, know how, and you're like, oh, what happened? It's actually on the shirt. So it's very helpful for when you're bothering to remember what's going on. 20 bucks gets you the shirt, 15 days left. Give it a look, teespring.com slash twit. Again, that's teespring.com slash twit. It's a limited edition, go get it. All right, so how, how's the uh, well, PC I got going? the motherboard mostly plugged in. I'm just going to add the um, the wireless card and the graphics card, and uh, should be able to boot it fairly shortly. We're going to try to boot this thing up. Yeah. Why okay, not? that sounds like a disaster waiting to happen. I got to say. So while, while you're doing that, so Ryan's going to do all the heavy lifting here. So he's well, actually the, the whole thing is heavy. If you haven't noticed, what what do you think this thing weighs? Oh, it's a good 30 pounds, maybe. Uh, it's pretty heavy. I I only take it in my truck. I have a camper shell over my my truck bed so I can just throw it in the back, drive down to LA um, and film shoots and stuff and be able to bring it on set, which I do all the time. Now, there's one device you didn't bring with you. You have a battery pack for this thing, don't you? Yeah, so I recently made one. It was actually originally for strobes for shooting uh, photos on location, but um, I built it so beefy that it'll actually run this thing for about three to four hours straight. Have you, were you, you actually got this to work three or four hours on that battery source? Yeah, it's a battery source in another Pelican case. The Pelican case is about, I don't know, quarter of the size of this one, but I have uh, 50 amp hours of energy in it. So it'll run this thing for about three to four hours. That is that is absolutely absurd, I gotta say. I'm not sure why, I mean, look, this is one of those because you can. And if you need power, kind of thing, a lot of people, why did you bother? This is because you wanted to do it. I mean, this is, this is crazy. Again, when he showed this to me a couple weeks ago, it's like, we gotta show this. I want to make one myself. I want to build one into a coffee table, actually. So might want to do that at some point in the future. Might try to suck a Ryan into helping me do that. <laughs> I'm game. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, let's while Ryan's work on that. Let's uh, take a look at some emails. You guys sent us an email. Uh, email from Daryl. He says he wants to, uh, us to show how to set up a wireless extender and repeater to extend an existing home wireless network. He would love to know how. If you've got ideas like that or you've got suggestions, you can give us an email at knowhowtwit.tv. Now, we are going to do an episode like that. We, Ru our IT guy, Russell, he set up this awesome repeater structure over in a winery. So we're going to try to go to this winery and show how you can extend your wireless for miles. You probably don't need that in your house, but why not show you how that works? Because I think it would be a lot of fun. We could have a nice know-how field trip. So if you want to be a part of the know-how field trip, I don't know how you could do that, but you could own a winery. But uh, if you got show ideas, let us know. Know how at twit.tv, or you can leave us a, vo a voicemail 408 800 KNOW. 408 800 KNOW. How are we doing, Mr. Marsh? Good. I think we could try to boot it. Um, this, by the way, is a custom power cable I made. I basically took a normal desktop PC power cable, cut it, added a, uh, just in the middle of it, bound the ends together and added an extra port so that I have one cable that feeds both the power supply and I have the tail for the monitor coming out here on this side as well. So that way uh, I'm good. And then I added a little one port surge protector on the back of this thing. And uh, so you can just uh, have it safe while you're, while you're going anywhere. This, so uh, it's, it's up and underneath the, uh the table here. Oh, I got it. You got it? Okay, so what we're gonna do is, uh, we haven't tested this after we put it back together, so that's always the most fun. We don't know if it's gonna work. Oh, we got views on it, we got power. Where's the on switch on this thing? So this is the on switch right here. I actually shredded the, um, the switch inside the old tower case, and I uh, just, it's the bare bones of the LEDs right here and the little plastic uh, switches. Let's see if it boots up. Let me turn on the power supply. We got lights. We got lights. We got fans. You can see the blue lights on in here. If we go to the other shot, you can, there are fans moving. This is a full-fledged PC that you put in the case. This is absurd, I've got to say. Yeah, I, I hope it boots. Sometimes it does this little, uh, when I move it around too much. Oh, I got blue light on the monitor. And it looks like we're good. OK, so if you wanted to build one of these yourself, now you know how. And by the way, we've got, we've got show notes for every episode, if you go to twit.tv slash kh, normally I write the show notes, and I've, I've, I've done it for other episodes, but for this particular episode, Ryan did the heavy lifting. He's got every step he did to put this thing together. It's going to be available at, this, at the website, twit.tv slash kh, for everything you should know on how to make your own portableized desktop PC in a Pelican case. Uh, it sounds crazy, but you can do it. 
because Ryan wrote the notes, and I, this is this is insane. There's also a lot of small um, little add-ons that I did, little touches. For example, the cable uh, cable access ports back here, which keep out dust and dirt. There's a lot of details. Uh, if you really want to know some details or have some troubleshooting help, then uh, and maybe go over some of the issues that I had during the process. Uh, you can feel free to email me at ryanrmarsh at gmail.com. You, you gave that out, out yeah. loud? Okay, good for you. You're, you're a brave man. I was just saying they could just send us an email, twit. Uh, but I guess that, that's fine too. Uh, again, if you've got show ideas or questions for Ryan, you, you missed his email, give us an email at knowhow at twit.tv. We do this show every Thursday, and we've got crazy projects coming up. I know you guys want to do VPN. I have to do VPN, so we're going to do VPN. I think next week. Uh, Colin, what do you think? VPN? We're doing VPN next week because why the heck not? You guys have been asking, and we listen. Uh, Leo will be back next week. And again, if you, if you missed anything we talked about, twit.tv slash kh, show notes, downloads. You can scrub through the video. You're like, hey, I missed a part. You can just pause it right there. It's just fantastic. Available all the time. So now that you know how, go, go do it. Go make one. <laughs>